And we are back here on the GSMC Baseball Podcast, bringing you our fourth and final segment of the show today, which is talking about um, some just some news around the league, just some stuff I did want to touch upon, some uh, some interesting things that I thought were notable to talk about, and uh, some notable things you just you know say. So, uh, yeah, I wanted to go over the first one, which was an interest, really interesting one that kind of caught my eye, and I wanted to talk about it. So, Tristan McKenzie of the Cleveland Guardians. Last year, he tore his UCL in his pitching arm. wasn't to a like a full way where they had to have Tommy, where he had to have Tommy John. Again, I don't really know the full scope of it. I'm not a medical expert. I don't really know that side of baseball or just anything. I'm not. A, I'm not a medical person. I have a podcast about baseball. So, um, Zach Meitz, Meitzel, I believe I'm pronouncing the name right. If I'm not, I apologize. One of the better Guardians reporters. He had a full article and interview with Tristan McKenzie just about the whole situation. If you do want to look, if you do want to see that, please read it. It's a great article. So, but yeah, um, Tristan McKenzie in that set. So, what I was what I was saying before I went off topic was, <coughs> I was not saying that. Um, so McKenzie did tear his UCL, of course. So usually you would have Tommy John or just a surgery, kind of like someone like Jonathan Lewisaga is having or Spencer Strider, where it's not Tommy John, but it's still reconstructing the UCL and you are for the year. Instead, McKenzie decided to not get surgery and have rehab and rehab through it and see if he could pitch through it with, um, you know, still with the torn. I know some pitchers have done that in the past, most notably Mashiro Tanaka, who did it really throughout his whole tenure with the Yankees and was fine. So now McKenzie is saying he's not sure about that decision and he's not sure if it was the right decision. His velocity has notably dropped, and he hasn't been himself. He hasn't been as good as you would usually expect him to be these past this past year and uh, kind of in the second half of last year as well when this, he was getting affected by this. So that's something interesting to see that he isn't sure if he made the right decision. Um, I'm not sure if he did either. I would have just gone with the surgery, to be honest. McKenzie's a young pitcher, a guy that has a lot of potential. What's interesting about him is, you know, he is called Sticks. That's his nickname because he is so – he looks – he's skin, like they say at the – the saying skinny as a stick he's skinny as a stick i mean that is what he, and so that kind of has to do with his body you know you don't you wouldn't expect a lot of velocity to be coming out of him a guy who was very skinny kind of tall but still not really as a build of an athlete you would kind of expect with the muscles so but yeah so it's interesting to hear him say he's not sure about this injury decision and it's just it's something that I'm I'm wondering about if other pitchers feel the same about just their overall injury decision throughout their career, and it's it was really it was really interesting to hear him just be fully transparent with it, fluid about it, and just say you know I'm not sure if I made the right decision, but we'll see if he does get surgery. I would I I do think he's going to get surgery eventually, and it's going to be a big blow to the Guardians. I mean, they've been really good this year, but at the same time, Shane Bieber all, just had just had Tommy John for them, so uh, yeah, I mean, it's going to be. Just something that is, some that is something to watch here, as season goes forward and seeing what he does happen, what does happen with Mackenzie's arm and his UCL. So, I'll be keeping close eyes on that. And again, it's a it's, it's a situation that really really does interest me. Uh, next, we have the Red Sox. They placed Tyler O'Neill on the concussion list, the seven day concussion list. Now, O'Neill had a collision in the outfield with Rafael Devers after they both went for the same outfield ball. And he, of course, got a concussion and landed on the seven-day IL. This is a big blow to the Red Sox as O'Neill was great. Seven home runs, an OPS plus of 239 leading the league, an OPS of 1.209, which also led the league. So he was doing really, really well back in his spot, back uh, with his new team of Boston. You know, I think it kind of just wore thin with him in St. Louis with um, the team and the players and the organization. You know, he dealt with some kind of public backlash with the manager of the team, Oliver Marmol. So it was kind of time for him to just get out of there and build a new start for him. So obviously he's done very well with the Red Sox, seven home runs. Um, but now he's landing on the seven-day IL. Uh, you know, no correlation there with the seven-day IL and seven home runs with a concussion. So that is unfortunate. That is something I don't think Red Sox fans were hoping for. But, um, I mean... Yeah, I don't know what that was, what I just said, sorry, but it is unfortunate that they are losing him. He's been so good with them. He's been one of the bright spots, that line of bright spots of this team. One of the reasons I do think that they are uh, they they are outperforming a lot of the expectations people place upon them. So 
Yeah, I'm definitely hoping it gets better. I think concussions are a thing that can affect an athlete for a long time, and we saw it with last year with Rizzo, who looked lost to play for three months, and we figured out he had a concussion that they never diagnosed. So concussions are a thing that I think are a big deal with baseball players. Of course, bigger with other sports like hockey and football. But at the same time, it is still something that is notable with baseball. It is still something that does affect them, and it could have a long-term effects if it keeps going on and on. It doesn't fully go away. I thankfully have never had a concussion, so I don't know what the kind of regimen is for that or how much it does really affect you. But as I've heard, they're not fun, and I think it is going to be something that the Red Sox have to monitor for the rest of the year. And uh, yeah, it is unfortunate that O'Neill's placed in the concussion list, the injured list. You know, he got enough. He had gotten off to such a great start with the Red Sox, and he's doing a really great job with them. So yeah, it is unfortunate it had to end up like that. And uh, hopefully, it gets better. Of course. Robert Stevenson, the uh, biggest signee for the Angels this year, signing a three-year contract as a reliever worth $33 million, has been placed on the injured list with an elbow injury and is out for the entirety of the year. I mean, this is a shocker last night. I made a short on it as well, so if you want to hear my first reaction to my first take on it, you can uh, go check that out here on the channel. It goes, that's it. It's on shorts. Um, so, yeah, this is not a big shock here. I mean, Stevenson had an elbow injury that, popped up preseason, Re Angels were monitoring it, said, you know what, he's not going to start the season on the opening day roster, but he should be back, and then it kind of, we got really no updates, and it kind of turned into, well, he'll be back later in the season, and then it just dissolved into this, where, okay, he's out for the year. I'm not exactly sure what the injury is, actually. Um, I don't think they've been too specific, but it's enough to keep him out for the year. I would assume he tore something. I mean, he's out for the year, that's what I would assume, so... That is really unfortunate. I thought Stevenson was going to be a really good signing for whatever team got him. He had a breakout season with the Rays last year. His stuff was phenomenal. He pitched really, really well. I was hoping the Mets would sign him, but you know, signing a reliever to a three-year deal as the Angels was always a questionable decision. I mean, again, I think Stevenson's really good, and I think the actual contract is good, but spending big money on a reliever when you're a mediocre team at best was kind of a surprising move. You could have spent on a lot of other things, maybe a real starting pitcher. You could have given that money to someone like Marcus Stroman if you wanted to sign there. So, you know, surprising. But it is unfortunate for Stevenson. I was really hoping to watch him this year, see if he could replicate what he did last year with Tampa. Um, again, it's sad that it had come to this, and it's sad that he's out for the year. So, yeah, it is unfortunate. And something I'll be monitoring in the future, seeing if he does bounce back. They still have two years left for his contract at $11 million per year. So it seems like another bad contract given up by the Angels. Kind of common at this point. <coughs> they apparently get a $2.5 million team option at the end of the contract, though, because he was out for an entire year. I think that's what it was. So that is, I guess, nice if he does perform well at the end of the contract. But still unfortunate, and I was looking forward to watching him, and it does kind of suck that he will be out for the rest of the year. Next, we have Garrett Whitlock. He went to the injured list with an oblique strain for the Red Sox. Whitlock has been really, really strong this year. And under two, we are right, has been one of the bright spots for this Red Sox team. So it is unfortunate that, like O'Neill, he's going on the injured list for them. Oblique strain shouldn't be that big of a deal for a pitcher. I would expect he's back in around 15 to 20 days. I don't think it's something that is going to affect him fully going forward. But, yeah, still unfortunate. Again, Whitlock was finally breaking out, finally doing really, really well. And he gets hit with an injury like this. It is unfortunate. It is something that I think is a negative for the Red Sox right now, something you don't want to see. So, yeah, um, not happy about that if you're a Red Sox fan. And it is unfortunate. Again, I think Whitlock was kind of um, becoming a really great guy for the Red Sox so far, becoming a really good pitcher and kind of living up to his potential fully right now. So it's, it's sad that this did happen, and hopefully he gets better, and I think he'll be a big part of the Red Sox future and what they do end up bringing here for, for uh, their pitching core. Michael Tonkin was picked up by the Mets off of waivers from the Twins, which is very interesting. The Mets just DFA'd him around a week or two ago. Talked about it on the show. He had two appearances for the Mets, both against the Tigers. Both, uh, both times he blew, uh, blew the game for them. So got picked up by the Twins, who he pitched for earlier in the 2010s, back, uh, back when he was actually in the Major Leagues and not pitching for independent ball. Got DFA'd by them, and then the Mets picked him up again. So Mets obviously did not give up on him, even even though they did release him. So, yeah, that's something that is interesting. I said this in a short I made last night as well, but it would have been fun if 
the Mets traded him to the Twins for a player to be named later, and then Tonkin was traded for himself as he was the player to be named later as the Mets picked him up and the Twins got rid of him. So I think that would have been really fun. But, you know, it is nice that Tonkin is back with the Mets. He's back in the NBA roster as well. So I think a whirlwind few days for him, and I think he's hoping to have a second tenure with the Mets better than the first one and hoping to make it stick. Finally, the Padres placed Hugh Darvish on the aisle with, ne- with neck techni- tightness for 14 days. An unfortunate thing here, I mean, Darvish, of course, is one of the better pitchers for the for the Padres and a guy that I think is really, really good. I don't think neck tightness should be a huge deal. He'll come back from this relatively soon, but with these older pitchers, you have to be worrisome about these kind of injuries and these kind of things. So, yeah, I mean, definitely watching this one here. Definitely monitoring it, seeing what does happen. So, again, I'll be I'll be watching what happens, and I'll be seeing what does uh, what does unfold here. So, unfortunate injury for the for the Padres and the Padres fans, uh, having a having a really good past few days. So, again, hoping hoping Darvish gets better and hoping he rebounds from this. So, yeah, uh, that is the end of the show for today, guys. I want to thank you so much for watching. Uh, remember to follow us anywhere on social media to get content and updates: Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. TikTok, if you're on it, we're probably on it as well. So uh, make sure to subscribe to the channel, post notification bell to make sure you guys get notified whenever we upload a video. A lot of people who watch this content are not subscribed to the channel. So make sure to subscribe and uh, get notified every time we upload, not just me, but all the other great content creators on this channel. Again, thank you so much for watching, and we'll, uh, we'll see you tomorrow, and we'll see what baseball brings us. Thanks, and bye. Let's go. I wake up to a little bit of drool on my pillow, feel like it's gonna be a bad day. Yeah, I'm tired of shit, and the coffee ain't hit yet. Damn, ain't that great. I don't wanna go.